Let us now discuss on how to determine the dynamic head for a water pumping application. We know that the total dynamic head H is given by the suction head HS plus the discharge head HD plus another component, a virtual component of the head which is due to friction loss. Now these two components HS plus HD are determinable from physical measurements, direct physical measurements. However, HF is not physically measurable because this is a virtual quantity, it represents a friction loss, you need to estimate it. So this needs to be estimated. So how do we obtain these quantities? Now let us see the uh, HS and HD part, this is the easier part and then later we will see how we go about estimating the friction loss component of the head also. Now consider a water tank at a lower level so it is filled with water and we need to lift water out of this tank and put it to a overhead tank. Now let us have a pipe and that is called the suction pipe it is reaching the centrifugal pump so this is the centrifugal pump this is the suction pipe and then from the other side of the centrifugal pump there is another pipe which is called the discharge pipe and it discharges into a overhead tank in this fashion now what are the heads in this case now the pressure required to overcome the height from the bottom of the suction pipe to up to the central axis of the uh, pump is called the suction head. So let us mark that. So all the water that is within the suction pipe up to the edge of the suction pipe and the potential needed to lift that water from the edge of the suction pipe up to the axis of the pump is called the suction head HS. Now above the pump, from the center axis of the pump up to the maximum height to which the water is lifted up is called the discharge head HD. Now in this case the total lift, the water has to be lifted to a total height of HS plus HD and the total physical head is HD plus HS. Now consider another scenario where you have water in the tank as shown like this. So this water tank containing water is having a pipe connected like this in this fashion and it is placed at a height above a common ground reference and the water flows from this outlet of this tank into a pump like this. So the inlet to the pump is in this fashion where the pump may be uh, where the water uh, which is being sucked in through the suction pipe is at a higher level than the pump itself. But the pump needs to pump the water to a much greater height located in this fashion where the delivery tank is at a much higher level than the source tank but the pipe connection may be in this fashion. So let us see what are the suction heads and the delivery heads here. So take the tip of the pipe and the center of the pump for the source side or the suction side and we will call that one as HS. The taking the tip of the pipe as the worst case 
and the center of the pump we get as the this as the suction head now considering the highest point to which the water is pumped to the center of the pump so this is for delivery you will have the delivery head so now here actually in actuality water is pumped from this level to this level so if you take the highest point so the water is pumped from the minimum level this one to the maximum level this one so the difference in this height is where the water body has been lifted so energy needs to be given only to achieve a transfer of the water body to a height of this difference hd minus hs so in this case the total physical head is not actually hd plus hs it is hd minus hs because the suction side of the source and the piping is such that it is above the pump central axis and therefore there is a positive pressure which is aiding the pump to push water this is a positive pressure which is aiding the pump to push uh, um, uh, push further into the uh, delivery head so therefore in this kind of a scenario you will see that the total physical head is hd minus hs however for the case of sum if there is a sum which is down below the ground for the case of bore well where the water source is below the ground this is the um, total head that will come into picture the delivery head plus the suction head suction head and the delivery head will always add up we saw that we could determine the suction head hs and the delivery head hd from physical measurements and depending upon how the source tank and the delivery tank are placed for a given application now we need to find hf the equivalent head representing the friction loss we will use for this an empirical relationship that uh, was proposed by weisbach it is popularly called the darcy weisbach formula and it is given in this fashion hf which is the head due to the friction loss component f a uh, friction factor into l the length of the pipe the total length of the pipe by d the inner diameter of the pipe then you have u square by 2g where u is nothing but the velocity of the fluid flow in meter per second g is the gravitational acceleration 9.81 meter per second square so this is the darcy weisbach formula so let me list down the various variables hf is the head loss in meters f is the friction factor it is a unitless quantity l is the length of pipe in meters d is the inner diameter of the pipe again in meters u is the velocity of the fluid flow in meter per second g is the acceleration due to gravity in meter per second square now among all these parameters g u d l they are easily measurable l is me l and d are measurable u also is measurable the fluid flow velocity f is the friction factor and this is something which uh, is not uh, so easy to obtain in fact it was not easy to obtain till we uh, had another Uh, empirical relationship called the colbrook white formula using that the friction factor was established so this is uh, the one which is more difficult to uh, estimate but uh, today with computer and colbrook uh, white colbrook white uh, formula 
we will be able to find the friction factor, use that friction factor, substitute here in the Darcy Weisbach formula and we will get the head loss and use this head loss substitute into the uh, total dynamic head formula you will get the total dynamic head and use the total dynamic head to obtain the power required the hydraulic power required for the application so now let us see how we get this friction factor the friction factor is dependent on the type of fluid flow See, the fluid is incompressible most of the time what we are talking about is water pumping and therefore it is incompressible it is flowing through a uh, pipe that are cylindrical the diameter is fixed uh, therefore we can consider these two types of flow that is the laminar flow and the turbulent flow so the Reynolds number will indicate whether the flow is laminar or turbulent so let us say if the flow were laminar so then the friction factor f is given by 64 by reynolds number a simple equation where reynolds number is u x by uh, nu the kinematic viscosity so here u is the velocity of the fluid x u is the velocity of the fluid x is inner diameter of the pipe and that is d nu is the kinematic viscosity and for water it is 0 0.55 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter square per second so we can use this and find out the reynolds number substitute it into the um, uh, laminar flow equation and obtain the friction factor now if it was turbulent the flow were turbulent then we will use another empirical relationship colebrook white formula after colebrook white formula was proposed uh, by colebrook and white it became uh, the uh, it became um, uh, quite popular uh, especially after the computer uh, came into being and uh, computers were used for uh, finding out uh, the solutions of equations see the colebrook white formula is something like this let me first write it down see this is a transcendental equation you cannot have an analytic solution for this 1 by square root of f f is the friction factor is equal to minus 2 log to base 10 epsilon by d by 3.7 plus 2.51 by reynolds number root f so uh, uh, you will not have an analytical solution so you have to uh, get obtain the value of f bar through an iterative means so you will have to put them in a loop and then iteratively obtain uh, the value of f i will show that shortly how to do that uh, so because of that computers were needed so only after computer design came into being this this formula became popular and then uh, started and it got, got uh, uh, being used uh, into the darcy uh, weisbach formula to determine hf so darcy weisbach formula became quite popular after this became popular now um, le uh, let us see this new variable which I have introduced here what is that epsilon so epsilon by d is a ratio and that is called as the roughness ratio uh, this has come into being because it depends uh, the f uh, the friction depends upon the smoothness of the inner walls of the pipe through which the water is flowing and uh, epsilon is actually the height of the bumps on the inner walls of the surface of the pipe divided by d the inner diameter so this gives you a measure of the roughness and it's called the roughness ratio so uh, you need to use that uh, for the important materials epsilon in mm for pvc it is zero 
So nowadays in uh, many of the applications PVC is used, the inner wall is absolutely smooth, can consider it as zero. Uh, uh, asbestos cement was used uh, quite some time uh, and some places it is still used, it is 0 0.012 steel 0 0.1 uh, smooth concrete uh, so concrete is used in large um, uh, applications where large flows are there so it is around 0 0.4 so you could use these values of epsilon and substitute here to obtain the value of the roughness ratio and substitute it here reynolds number calculate in this fashion and you can substitute for this value uh, of the Reynolds number here the only unknown in this entire equation would be f and then you will have to solve for it you will not be able to analytically obtain this value of f you will have to iteratively do that so probably you may have to use octave or uh, matlab and uh, find out this value of f how to know if the flow is laminar or turbulent so you calculate the value of r if the value of reynolds number r is less than 2000 then it is safely laminar if the value of the reynolds number is greater than 4000 then it is clearly turbulent flow in between, between 2000 and 4000 is the transition region, the uh, value, uh, uh, the uh, friction factor is not clearly defined. So we can take the worst case maximum of these two formulas uh, whenever it is in the transition region. So between two Reynolds number of 2000 to 4000, we say it's the transition region, then we will calculate the friction factor by this formula and friction factor by this formula and then take the um, max value of the worst case value of that one this is the higher friction factor value so that then you would have rated it for under worst case conditions next important exercise that we need to do is how to solve this colebrook white formula and find the value of f for a given value of roughness ratio and Reynolds number. Before numerical solutions became popular for this, there were nomographs referred to as the Moody charts. Let me show you that. When you go onto the internet browser and in Google you type Moody chart, then you will see graphs similar to like this. So these are nomographs, basically they are a graphical representation of the Colebrook white formula. So how do you read this? You see this is a family of curves, each of these curves that you see is for different roughness ratio. So for a given roughness ratio, this is the friction factor, the profile as the Reynolds number is changed. So the x-axis here is the Reynolds number and I have given the Reynolds number to sweep from 1000 to um, uh, 10 to the power of 7. So as you sweep the Reynolds number, you see that up to around 2000, uh, this is using the laminar flow equation and once it once uh, 2000 is crossed and somewhere here around 4000 the uh, turbulent flow model comes into the picture and this is where actually the cold brooks equation is used in between uh, it is actually the maximum of the two uh, models that is being used as a worst case. So that is what we have done here and this is what uh, is the Moody chart that we have obtained uh, using Octave. So if you look at the Moody chart which is there, uh, which you uh, obtain in the uh, literature, it will be very similar. Observe that 
this region is the laminar flow region this line here is Reynolds number equal to 2000 so this is the laminar flow region and this region is the turbulent flow region where we use a turbulent flow model and here is a trans transition region between 200 to 400 200 to 400 this is the 2000 Reynolds number equal to 2000 line now each of these lines are for different roughness ratio so epsilon by d is equal to 0 0.001 0 0.004 epsilon by d roughness uh, ratio 0 0.001 0 0.004 0 0.01 this is 0 0.02 this is 0 0.04 So like this, the uh, you have these nomographs. Then let us say you calculate the Reynolds number using uh, R is equal to U D by nu, that is the kinematic viscosity. Then uh, based on the value and based on uh, the roughness ratio, you can select that specific curve and uh, um, take out the uh, vertical intercept and you will get your friction factor so this way uh, people used to work using the moody chart obtain the friction factor substitute it in the darcy weisbach formula and obtain the uh, friction loss head but after the uh, advent of this uh, computerization and uh, uh, the numerical algorithms uh, started becoming popular MATLAB type of environment became uh, uh, very popular with the students and the engineers uh, uh, we can easily solve the cold group white uh, formula using iterative methods and that is what I am going to now show you using octave environment 